I want to share a dream that um, I had uh, three days ago, and the Lord keeps bringing it to my mind, and um, I just feel compelled to share it. So um, I'm going to share it and then share what the Lord's impressed upon me about it, and then scriptures. Okay, so in my dream, um, it was my birthday, and to celebrate, I wanted to uh, go, I wanted to be able to go horseback riding. Um, so I went uh, to a uh, stables that offered, you know, horse rentals for the hour or the day or whatever. And um, while I was waiting for them to bring me a horse that I was going to be riding, um, someone came and told me that it would be a bit longer. Um, I wrote down, someone came and told me it would be a bit longer as the house, I, uh, the horse I was going to um, use, they had given to somebody else to ride. And when, you know, once they got back, it would be a quick ride. And once they got back, that I would be able to, you know, have that horse. Well, come to find out, it was um, the two horses that they had just rented out were given to my two youngest sons. I have five sons. So my two younger sons were um, given the two horses, given two horses, and I didn't know what they looked like. Um, the horses, but um, I saw them right off past me right after the rental. The stables told me that, and um, my youngest was on a pale horse, not pure white, and then my second to the youngest was on a black, a really nice looking black horse. And so they sort of trotted by past me, and I was thinking, oh goodness, I'm gonna have to wait. <laughs> Um, but they trotted past me and as soon as they passed me and they were just off in the distance on the grass, um, I don't know, maybe like 200 yards, they started running. Um, so the horses took off running. So, um, this, both of my younger ones, my sons are adopted, the younger two, and they're my nephews by birth. And so they have different fathers, but. Um, the same mother, my one of my sisters, and um, the second to the youngest that was on the black horse, um, he has a, a lower IQ, and so I was, you know, I was thinking, well, seems to be doing okay. But as soon as the horses took off running, you know, I ha I had a a thought like, oh my gosh, you know, I hope he knows to hold on and and not get, you know, not fall off. So, um, so they, the horse took off running and then shortly, like just minutes after that, um, I heard commotion from people that worked at the stables and, and some, an order for someone to call an ambulance. And so I was worried because my sons were the ones that just took off and like about a minute or two after that, the black horse came back to me. Um, the black horse um, came running back, and then it stopped in front of me, you know, like it was my turn to ride it. <laughs> it was just by itself, and my son wasn't on it. So I knew something must have happened to him, um, that he must have fallen off the horse or something happened because they were calling an ambulance. And then I heard um, them talk. I was asking, but they didn't want to answer me. Um, they didn't want to tell me like what had happened just yet, and they were still trying to get help for him. And I asked why, why did you guys call the ambulance? And I heard something about he can't move. Um, and then I was like, oh my goodness, I just knew that he had broken his neck. So it was just like I knew that he wasn't dead, but he had broken his neck and he couldn't feel anything. And he couldn't move. So when the horse had taken, so like I said, the horse, um, I said when I wrote down when the horse had taken off running, he hadn't gripped himself onto the horse or held on tightly. Um, so he had fallen off the back and broke his neck and I didn't want to, and 
I just remember in my dream, I didn't want to see him in that condition. I didn't want to see him hurt and unable to move. So what the Lord impressed upon me through this dream was that these are the third and fourth horse, horses of the um, Revelation 6. And they symbolize that. Um, if you look at Revelation 6, when he opened the verse 5, when he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, come and see. So I looked and behold, a black horse and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a Daenerys and three quarts of barley for Daenerys and do not harm the oil and the wine. And then the fourth, when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the four living creatures saying, come and see. So I looked and behold, a pale horse and the name of him who sat on it was death and Hades followed with him and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death and by the beasts of the earth. Okay, so the third one represents the economy, um, fan, you know, price of food, is particularly here, a quart of wheat for three quarts of, a quart of wheat for Daenerys and three quarts of barley for Daenerys do not harm the oil and the wine. And I've um, given insight into this verse before, but the oil and the wine represent um, those that are filled with the oil, the Holy Spirit, um, Christians, and the wine. Um, the Israelites, the Jews, well, God's chosen people, okay? So um, the the horse seemed, this, there, was, there was nothing particularly wrong with the black horse. It wasn't wild or anything. It's just that my son didn't know how to hold on. Um, he didn't know how to ride the horse. And so... Um, I feel that, that represents, um, you know, when the economy does crash, the people that aren't ready, just like my son wasn't ready to ride a horse, um, they're not going to be able to, um, they're not going to be able to make it through those times, you know, financially or, or with enough food. Um, it's going to be too costly and it's going to be at a great expense. Like my son was you know traumatically injured um so we need to be prepared and we need to be ready just as a rider that is familiar with a horse should be and so um in the dream i represented christians um so we are watching and waiting for these things to occur you know the seals to be opened and it's not that we're waiting anticipating it to happen but we're expecting it to happen because the word tells us it will and so we like matthew 24 mark 13 and luke 21 tells us if you read all of those chapters tells us that we should watch and pray and be ready for these things um i wrote down it will occur when we are not expecting it to um so i wasn't expecting him to be injured before i got to ride the horse because I was with the one that was supposed to be riding it first. So it'll happen, um, you know, unexpectedly, first of all, it will be something unexpected. And um, even though we are, and to, we are looking for when it will occur, it's still going to happen unexpectedly. And um, I put down later than we believe because, um, um because well, i don't know <laughs> i wrote down it will occur when we are not expecting it to later than we believe or perceive but it will happen so um you know like i said we need to be prepared for that i said i also wrote down the horses happen simultaneous simultaneously so the black horse and the pale horse um in my dream, they both went riding at the same time. And so um, they're not going to occur like the economy. And then all of um, this happens, famine, war, hunger, earth. Okay, so a, a power was given to the over, 
the, I'm sorry, power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beast of the earth. So these, the economy crashing and these things occurring will happen simultaneously or back to back, just like they went riding together. Um, but the effects will be felt from the economy crashing first because my son was injured um, and the pale horse hadn't come back yet. It was still out riding with my other son. Um, and then I wrote down what the Lord impressed on my heart. Tragedy comes with the black one and it will arrive. My son was hurt and the horse came back. He sh the horse showed up, although um, late for me to ride, but it showed up. Okay, and then not far off to go through. Um, the black horse is not that far off um, for for us. Sorry, I'm trying to decipher my notes because now I'm I'm trying to tell the story and decipher my notes at the same time. I said tragedy comes with the black one and it will arrive um, or show up, even though it's later than we expect. It will happen unexpectedly and um not too far off from now and just like the horse was not too too far from me it did the, they didn't get past me very far just a couple minutes out before the tragedy happened and it came back um and then i wrote the pale horse follows and we saw that in revelation 6 um, with it comes worse things. So we can see that from the scriptures. Um, you know, there's death in Hades and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, a fourth of the earth's population to kill the sword, hunger, death, and by the beasts of the earth. Um, I wrote down sometimes what we, what we want or what we expect are not what we really want, but it will happen nonetheless. So, I was expecting to have a nice day um, just writing by myself, um, but that's not what happened. And so sometimes what we are wishing for or expecting isn't what we really want or need, but, it, and, but things will happen anyway. Keep your eyes towards Jesus. Look for Jesus for strength and endurance and hope when these things befall you. And then I wanted to share a few verses. Um, I wrote down Hebrews 12, 1 to 2, and Psalm 105. But I also have 1 Thessalonians 5, 3, for when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. And Isaiah 47 is a good, good chapter to read. It talks about um, the destruction coming to Babylon. Um, and then we saw Revelation 6. And then Jeremiah 24, the Lord gave me this chapter as well. So Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Hebrews 12, 1, 1 and 2. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and as he and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So I wanted to read Jeremiah 24. Um, I think this is a fitting um, parable in the Old Testament, if you want to call it. It's a it's a typology here. The Lord showed me, and there were two baskets of figs set before the temple of the Lord. After Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jeconia, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah with the craftsmen and smiths from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. One basket had very good figs, like the figs that are first ripe, and the other basket had very bad figs, which, you, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. Then the Lord said to me, What do you see, Jeremiah? And I said, figs, the good figs, very good, and the bad, very bad, which cannot be eaten. They are so bad. And again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Thus does the Lord, the God of Israel, like these good figs, so will I acknowledge those who are carried away captive from Judah, whom I have sent out on the 
of this place for their own good into the land of the Chaldeans. For I will set my eye on them good for good, and I will bring them back to this land. I will build them and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. Then I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return to me with their whole heart. And as the bad figs which cannot be eaten, they are so bad, surely thus says the Lord, so will I give up Zedekiah the king of Judah, his princes, the residue of Jerusalem who remain in this land, and those who dwell in the land of Egypt. I will deliver them to trouble into all the kingdoms of the earth, For their harm, to be a reproach and a byword, a taunt and a curse in all places there I shall drive them. And I will send the sword, the famine, and the pestilence among them till they are consumed from the land that I gave to them and their fathers. That's what's in store for the unsaved, the unrighteous. Just like here, um, power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill the sword with hunger, death, and the beasts of the earth. So sword, hunger, and death. So here in Jeremiah 24 says, I will deliver them to trouble into all the kingdoms of the earth for their harm, to be a reproach and a byword, a taunt and a curse in all places where I shall drive them, and I will extend the sword, famine, hunger, and the pestilence among them till they are consumed from the land that I gave to them and their fathers. And then Psalm 105 Contrast to the punishment of the wicked, here we have the eternal faithfulness of the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing psalms to him, talk of all his wondrous works, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord, seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Of Abraham his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the word which he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac, and confirmed it to Jacob for a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying to you, I will give you the land of Canaan as the allotment of your inheritance, when there are few in number, indeed very few, and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another, people, he permitted no one to do them wrong. Yes, he rebuked kings for their sake, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones, and do not, and do my prophets no harm. Moreover, he called for a famine in the land. He destroyed all the provision of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in irons until the time that his word came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his elders wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt and Jacob dwelt in the land of Ham. He increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal craftily with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They performed his signs among them and wonders in the hand of Ham. He sent darkness and made it dark, and they did not rebel against his word. He turned their waters into blood and killed their fish, their land abandoned with frogs, even in the chambers of their kings. He spoke, and there came swarms of flies and lice in all their territory. He gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. He struck their vines also and their fig trees and splintered the trees of their territory. He spoke and locusts came, young locusts without number, and ate up all the vegetation in their land, devoured the fruit of their ground. He also destroyed all the firstborn in their land, the first of all their strength. He also brought them out, out with silver and gold, and there was none feeble among his tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed, for their for the fear of them had fallen upon them. He spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light in the night. The people asked, and he brought quail and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and water gushed out. It ran in the dry places like a river. He remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. He brought out his people with joy, his chosen ones with gladness. He gave them the lands of the Gentiles, and they inherited the labor of the nations, that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise the Lord.